Good morning. Uh, we're going to start. Hi, good morning. I am Councilmember Ku, uh, Chair of the Subcommittee on Landmarks, Public Sighting, and Maritime Uses. We are joined by Council Members uh, Debbie Rose, um, Campus Member Manchaka, uh, Ben Kalos, and Rosie Mendez. Is that right? We will be holding public hearings and voting on two school sightings today, both of which we hear P consider. The first item is a second uh, 332 seat primary school that would be located at the corner of 8th Avenue and 46th Street in Sunset Park section of Brooklyn, represented by Councilmember Manchaka. The second item, uh, 332 seat primary school uh, proposed for the southwest corner of 4th Avenue and 30, 43rd Street, also in Sunset Park Session of Brooklyn, represented by Council Member Manchaka. The site consists of two uh, privately owned locks that the school construction authority proposed to acquire. One of the locks contained the former 68th police precinct station house and stable that together are a designated New York City landmark. SCA has worked with the State Parks Department to arrive at a redevelopment proposal that will preserve the main facades of the existing station housed on 4th Avenue and 43rd Street. Most of the existing structure will be demolished along with the stable building, and the proposed school will be constructed in a five-story L-shape behind the preserved historic facades. I will now open the public hearing on these items. The School Construction Authority will present both items. We will then hear testimony from the public on each item individually. Uh, we have Tama Smith, uh, Tami Wei Chosen, and Gail Mandelo from SCA to testify. Thank you. You can identify yourself and begin. Okay, uh, good afternoon, uh, Chairperson Ku and subcommittee members. My name is Tammy Rachelson, and I'm the Deputy Director for Real Estate Services for the School Construction Authority. The New York City School Construction Authority has undertaken the site selection process for a new public school facility on a site consisting of Lot 1 on Block 751 in the borough of Brooklyn. The site contains a total of approximately 13,000 square feet of lot area located on the corner of 8th Avenue and 46th Street on a block bounded by 45th Street, 8th Avenue, 46th Street, and 9th Avenue in Brooklyn. The site is privately owned and contains a vacant two-story commercial, commercial building. It was a former, I believe, Seatown supermarket and contains a, um, and is located within Brooklyn Community District Number 12 and Community School District Number 15. Under the proposed project, the SCA would acquire the site and construct a new approximately 332 seat primary school facility. The notice of filing for the site plan was published in the New York Post and City Record on January 12th, 2017. Brooklyn Community Board 12 and Community Education Council 15 were notified also on the site plan on January 12th, 2017 and were asked to uphold public hearings on the proposed site plan. Um, Community Board 12 and CEC 15 conducted a joint public hearing on the site plan on January 25th, 2017. Comments were not received from the Community Board and from the CEC. City Planning Commission submitted written comments in support of the site. The SCA has considered all comments received on the proposed site plan and affirms the site plan pursuant to Section 1731 of the Public Authorities Law. 
in accordance with Section 1732 of the Public Authorities Law, DSCA submitted the proposed site plan to the Mayor and City Council by letter dated July 10th, 2017. We look forward to your subcommittee's favorable consideration of the proposed site plan and are prepared to answer questions from the committee. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I just want to say thank you. I have some remarks that I'll say before the vote, but um, I I wanted to to ask a, a question about the process and how long has the SCA officially been engaging the site for possible school? Probably over a year. Okay, great. And then in that time, you've been working with local organizations. Okay. Great. Yes. And um, I'm assuming that there is a report that was done by the state of, uh, it's, it's going to be in my remarks, but the State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation? They did not find that the building was historically significant. Okay. The Seatown site. Say it again? The Seatown site. This is for the Seatown site? Yes. Okay, great. Well, I'm asking about both sites, but um, I will wait for my remarks and hand it off to, uh, f to my colleagues for the 8th Avenue site. Um, do you have a, a copy of a testimony for the, our committee? The, a copy of the testimony? I, have, I only have a copy, but I can email it to you. Okay. Or, yeah. or give you my copy afterwards? I mean, usually we, we have a copy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, first question. Uh, Council Member Kalos, yeah. Has the School Construction Authority responded to a uh, letter from MAS, the uh, New York Landmarks Conservancy and Historic Districts Council, Jul dated July 10th, 2017, before coming to the City Council uh, asking for us to pass this? As far as I know, they have not submitted anything on this. 4525 8th Avenue site. Is this PS 557? No. no. Okay, I will hold my questions for that one. So I have a question. So uh, have you, uh, have SCA ever done any like, landmark buildings before for school construction? Are they going to present on the fourth um? Council member votes. Yeah. Can can you go ahead for the second school? Yeah. I'm sorry. The second presentation. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good morning, Chairperson Ku and subcommittee members. My name is Tammy Rachelson, and I'm the Deputy Director for Real Estate Services for the School Construction Authority. The New York City School Construction Authority has undertaken the site selection process for a new public school facility on a site consisting of lots 34 and 36 on block 728 in the borough of Brooklyn. The site contains a total of approximately 12,500 square feet of lot area, located on the corner of 4th Avenue and 43rd Street on a block bounded by 43rd Street, 4th Avenue, 44th Street, and 3rd Avenue. Lot 34 is privately owned and unimproved. Lot 36 is also privately owned and contains the former 68th police precinct station and stable. Those two structures comprise a designated New York City landmark. The site is located within Brooklyn Community District number seven and community school district number 15. Under the proposed project, the SCA would acquire the site and construct a new approximately 332 seat primary school facility. The school facility would be constructed within a portion of the facade of the existing three story police station house and a new five story construction behind the footprint of the original structure. 
the main facades of the police station on both the 4th Avenue and 43rd Street would be preserved and stabilized, and the remainder of the station house would be demolished. The majority of the new construction would be arranged in a five-story L-shape behind the original footprint of the station house and would be set back from both 4th Avenue and 43rd Street. The notice of filing for the site plan was published in the New York Post and City Record on June 1st, 2016, Brooklyn Community Board 7 and Community Education Council Number 15 were also notified of the site plan on June 1st, 2016, and were asked to hold public hearings on the proposed site plan. Brooklyn Community Board 7 and CEC 15 conducted a joint hearing on the site plan on June 13th, 2016. Comments were received from both the Community Board and from the CEC. The City Planning Commission submitted comments in support of the site. The SEA has considered all comments received on the proposed site plan and affirms the site plan pursuant to Section 1731 of the Public Authorities Law. In accordance with Section 1732 of the PAL, the SCA submitted the proposed site plan to the Mayor and City Council by later dated July 10, 2017. We look forward to your subcommittee's favorable consideration of the proposed site plan and are prepared to answer questions from the committee. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, Councilmember Manchaga, you want to ask questions first? Yeah, I'll just start with a few quick questions about uh, this site too. How long has this site been in process for review with the community? Um, with the community, the community board seven had over the years suggested the site, and um, this has probably been going on for close to two years. Great. And so I just want to underscore that this has been a site that has been on the community board list of potential sites for review from the School Construction Authority for many, many years. Do you have a sense about when, do your records indicate when that started becoming an item? We've looked at the site for probably over the last 15 years, but probably within the last two years it became more active. We had owners who were willing to who were interested in making a deal with us and were willing to sell, and we started an engagement. And as you know, we started public review. Um, we had considered demolishing the building. We heard from the public and organizations that this was something that they did not want done, and we've been engaging with State Historic for the last well over a year. And we've reached, and the state historic has reached an agreement that we think it's a compromised position where we can maintain the two facades, the most beautiful portions of the building along 4th Avenue and 43rd, and we will build an additional structure behind it, a five story, and we've agreed to continue to consult with State Historic, they will be privy to our design and will comment to make sure that the beauty of the landmark building is still there. And whatever we build in addition to that enhances it. Great. So I just I want to underscore that as, again uh, or as well, that we do not want to take this lightly. Um, Demolishing a landmark is not something that should be taken lightly and needs to be reviewed. And you said that you've done some a lot of that review already. The community has been really supporting a kind of preservation as much as possible. You've reached that agreement, and I want to applaud, applaud that work. Remind us again about the crisis that we're facing in Sunset Park and the numbers, if you can give us a sense, that really drive a lot of, of what well, we're talking about. We're funded for 3,840 seats in the district, many of which were, are in Sunset Park. And it's a fully, as you know better than anyone, it's a fully developed area. And we are basically, have only been able to find small sites. So, you know, we're slowly whittling away three, 400 seats at a time at the, capaci the desperate capacity needs for Sunset Park. Got it. Thank you. And I'll hand it back to the chair. Uh, 
Uh, forgive about... me for asking the uh, questions on the previous item. So with regards to uh, the proposed PS 557 location, uh, have you responded to a letter from Municipal Arts Society, the uh, Landmarks Conservancy and Historic Districts Council from July 10th before this hearing? I'm sorry, did we respond? Yes. I have not seen that letter. Has anyone from either of those organizations or any organizations uh, expressed concern with regards to preserving our city's landmarks? There have been, when we started public review, there was a tremendous amount of, I'd say, outcry about the potential demolition of the building, and that's why working with State Historic and various studies, we were able to maintain both facades on 4th Avenue and 43rd Street. Uh, I know that there were comments from that group when we held the hearing on the final environmental impact statement, but the specific letter I'm not aware of. Of the 3,800 seats that are required, how many are currently in uh, construction? Do you know how many are in construction? So, uh, hi there, I'm Tamar Smith from the SCA. The approximately 3,000 seats that were referred to are for District 15 as a whole. Um, and. Sunset Park has around 1,100. Um, so right now we have an addition being built for 436 seats elsewhere in, Sun in uh, District 15 at PS32. Um, and most of the other seats are in the works right now. Um, these are two of the sites that we have um, proposed. How many, sites, how many seats would come at this site? This would be <clears throat> actually both, both of these schools that we're considering but today. Just were this one. Approximately 332 seats. And can you find 332 seats at any of the vacant archdiocese locations in the same location? We've exhausted and we are, um, it hasn't been announced yet, but we're in discussions with the diocese about a school in Sunset Park, renting it. So every single one of the archdiocese locations uh, is currently pending negotiations? They have signed the lease already and we're getting in the process of obtaining approval to execute the lease. Uh, you've provided us a design which is basically a rough sketch of the external with a box uh, that does not, that is slightly insufficient in terms of trying to figure out whether or not you're going to actually try to continue the spirit and uh, design of the existing building or um, I guess the big question is, Am I voting on putting a box on top of this, or what is it going to actually look like? We can't, the simple answer is absolutely not. It will not be a box. We are not well into design, and as I mentioned earlier, we will be, we're obligated, and we want to continue to consult with State Historic to make sure that what we build complements the existing structure. Uh, will you commit to a reaching out and working with Municipal Arts Society, Landmarks Conservancy, Historic District Council, as well as any groups that Carl's Council Member Menchaca designates uh, regarding design concerns? Thank you very much. Um, we will be working with the State Historic Preservation as our regulatory um, body, but yes, we absolutely What about the, El the Landmarks Preservation Commission, which is the city body, which answers to this committee, and uh, I, I object to having a city agency going around the city council, the city's preservation commission, and this committee, uh, saying shippo, shippo, shippo doesn't help me. I need to hear LPC, and I need to hear that you are listening to my colleague and his constituency, because the state is, is not the city. Um, to just to address your question, I believe that there has been a meeting tentatively scheduled for September with LPC by, I believe, Ross Holden, the general counsel of the SCA. They had asked for an immediate meeting, and he asked if we could please wait till school opens in September. As you might imagine, the summer is a busy season for us. 
Um, but I do believe that he has a tentative date in September where he's agreed to meet with them. And what about taking the input of my colleague and groups in his neighborhood as well as the Municipal Arts Society? I think through the community process, if you could speak to that tomorrow, probably more than me. Yes, it was the comments of the community groups in, in, the, in Sunset Park and over the last year. Will they have feedback moving forward? Yes. Okay. How many current landmarks is SCA considering citywide to demolish and replace with schools? I believe this is the only landmark building that I'm aware of that we've been working on. Is this going to set a precedence where now SCA or even ECF is going to start trying to take down our landmarks and replace them uh, with schools with perhaps 1,000 foot towers on top of them? I do not believe we can speak for ECF at all, but I can tell you that uh, that would not ever be our preference to go after landmark building. The, as you might imagine, the cost associated with preservation and construction consistent with an existing landmark interferes with our ability to provide perhaps a better uh, program of requirements for our students, so it wouldn't be our first choice ever to go after a landmark building. In terms of preserving the stable, uh, how many, what would be the cost of preserving the stable and extending the box on top of the stable instead of taking down the stable and replacing the stable with a box? Uh, in the design meetings that I have been a party to, I don't recall ever seeing a breakout of that specific component of the building. We certainly could attempt to find out if such a data exists and provide it, but as far as I know, I've never heard that discussed in that particular question, to answer that question. Would you commit to doing that? I can commit to, if, if I can get that information, if it has ever been analyzed. I'm not sure that it ever has, however. If I don't it know. hasn't been analyzed, will you commit to analyzing it to see if you can preserve the stable and still and not lose programmatic space? That answer I may be able to provide you with because I do believe in the year plus time that we have been in uh, schematic design that that question may be able to be answered. I, I am. I am both proud and slightly, I, I wish the same as Carlos has for his district, for my district. Uh, WNYC says that I have 2,767 four-year-olds. We recently did a study and found that something like half of the kids who are applying for seats in my public schools are being turned away. The uh, chancellor at the last budget hearing finally admitted at the preliminary budget and then once again at the executive agreed that there was a seat need in my district, District 2, uh, from 59th Street to 96th Street. Uh, it sounds like you're well on your way to re getting 3,800 seats for my colleague. Where are you in terms of seats on the Upper East Side? The mayor says something called pre-K for all, but many of the children, many of the children, uh, the hundreds of four-year-olds in my district are being sent here, right by City Hall, 45-minute subway commute, and so, uh, where are we on bringing school seats to other districts as well? We are actively out right now and have been in attempts to identify suitable space, particularly for pre-K on the Upper East Side. We have um, some sites that are in preliminary consideration, not yet in a place where we would be ready to announce anything, um, but we are actively out looking for every possible square foot of space that we can construct program. I want to uh, thank my committee chair uh, for Landmarks for indulging me as well as my colleagues. Uh, this is a, a huge concern for me, the Municipal Arts Society, Landmarks Preservation Commission, as well as uh, uh, Historic District Council. I want to thank uh, Councilmember Carlos Menchaca and his community for being a champion for this and creating and preserving the facade. Uh, and uh, I. One, you get one. This isn't a precedence, and I want that in the record. And uh, if we can preserve this table, that would also be great. And I just want to uh, thank my colleague uh, for fighting for uh, this facade and for his community. And uh, I, I uh, with hesitancy on the fact that this will not be a uh, precedence and that this is a one-time case, uh, I, I will be supportive. Thank you. Uh, so, Councilmember Mendez. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, <clears throat> can can you tell me the full name of your agency? 
New York City School Construction Authority. Okay. New York City School Construction Authority. And the agency was created by whom? The city or the state? I think it was with the uh, jointly, the, s the state, mm -hmm. you know, joint between city and state. And in fact, when they created the enabling legislation, um, it was with that we would have to go to New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Places for any building of significance. So pursuant to the enabling legislation, the New York City School Construction Authority, a city-state created agency has to go through the New York State Historic Preservation Office, yes. even though this is a New York City landmark. Is that correct? Correct, but I believe that um, State Historic works with landmarks. You know, they, if a building is considered significant for a city, then State Historic would also consider it. Mm -hmm. The, the well. city process is a little bit more um, onerous than the state process. I have worked on state historic designation and city, and I've sat on this committee for 11 and a half years, so I, I can tell you that. So um, I, you're, you're meeting with the New York City Landmarks Preservation Commission in September, is that correct? I believe that's correct. They did communicate directly with the general counsel of the SCA, and I do believe he asked if we could schedule that meeting in sometime in September. I apologize, I don't know the date. Okay. And so at that, so what if any other information has been communicated to Landmarks Preservation Commission about this landmarked, New York City landmarked building? At least with respect to their most recent inquiries, I'm, I wasn't party to the telephone conversation uh, between Russ Holden and the organization. I do, however, the only information I really have present today is that he was engaged in scheduling a meeting with them in September at some point after schools are opened. Okay, so um, my understanding and what was presented to me before this hearing began is that the facade of the building on 43rd Street and the facade of the building on 4th Avenue and the circular castle part of the building right on the corner of 43rd and 4th will be kept and everything else will be torn down including the stables and then a structure will be built using the two exterior walls and that circular castle, is that correct? Yes. And um, you will, you School Construction Authority, will be meeting with LPC and issuing renderings that includes that structure, the two side walls and the circular um, apex that connects it. Is that correct? I'm not, sh I'm not aware that we're, that's what's going to transpire when they meet in September with Oh, Landmarks. but at some point, you, the School Construction Authority will be submitting that. Is that correct? What you saw, which I think is the rendering with the box, but will of course not be the final design, will be shown to, to any agency that comes to meet with the SCA. So yes, um, exactly what you saw with the preservation of the corner and the turret. And then uh, it, this is of course only for illustration, that box that's shown, that will be where the rest of the school is. So yes. Mm -hmm. And it will, be a taller structure, I'm assuming, than what is currently there now? The, what we will be building will be a five-story structure. And currently there is a, what story structure? Uh, the structure is three stories. Okay. And it will be five stories throughout the entirety of the block and lots, whatever that may be, including where the stables use, is are currently now and will no longer be in the future? Um, actually, the corner section um, will keep the height 
of the existing structure. In other words, the um, five stories will be set back from that section, except in the area where the stable is on 4th Avenue. Okay, can I that take a look at that, please? The entire structure actually will not come to five stories the whole way. It's a little hard to tell from the rendering, but that is an open air um, play yard right at the top there. So the five story will be set back from the street quite a bit and only on the section of 4th Avenue where the current stable is will there be that height. The rest will be the three stories that exist now. So, so I have a question, and I don't know if you're going to be able to answer this or some of our staff over here, but why is it that you're coming to this committee at this point without, and, I, and it's clear that the enabling legislation doesn't make you go to LPC, but for me, I know that if additional floors are gonna be added to a landmark structure, it needs to look, have the same kind of feel, and add to what the existing landmark architectural significance is. LPC has approved additional floors and height and bulk as long as it has the look and feel and extends that, um, that architectural significance throughout. So I, I, even if you don't have to, I don't understand why you wouldn't go to LPC before you come to this committee and the city council for a vote. We will be consulting with State Historic about the design, that the whatever materials and fenestration, et cetera, will complement the existing police station facade. I understand that. You've made that very clear. My question is, and if you can't answer it, say I can't answer it, is I don't understand why, even though you don't have to, why wouldn't you go to LPC so they could approve this so when it comes to us, I would feel a lot more comfortable knowing that LPC has reviewed it, is giving their blessings, and, it, and again, because LPC has a more stricter review than SHPO does. So can you answer that question for me? I'm not certain that any of us that are here today would be the appropriate party to address that question. Um, in, you know, I think our only answer or the only authority that we have to answer the question is that we are following to the letter our enabling statute and doing all that is statutorily required of us. Uh, Thank you, that, that does answer my question to a certain extent. Um, is there a issue with the timing of this that it needs to get to us? I'm just wondering, for me, why they didn't wait until September after a meeting with LPC, and is the timing of this such that it needs to get voted by this committee today? And whoever can answer that question I would just like it on the record. Right. City Council Land Use Division Deputy Director. Uh, we have 20 days to act once the school is it's filed with us. So this was filed with us on July 10th, and we have 20 days. And the next dated meeting is on Thursday, which is the 21st, I believe, the 20th. So it would go subcommittee the 17th, land use committee the 19th, and the state on the 20th. So since we only have 20 days, we need to act. Thank you. Now I have another question. So why was this filed in July, and why didn't someone wait until end of August or September to file so that we can have more information for LPC before this committee votes on it? Query, just... What? I mean, I'll, I'll, I can. I, I'll, uh, I will answer this. We are in deep crisis, and we we want to move forward. We went through, I believe, what you've just testified as the law. Um, I understand that there are multiple agencies, including the LPC. That would be great. There's a meeting in, uh, scheduled. We are we are in a in a deep crisis. 
in our community right now and we need every single seat and we will continue to fight. You're gonna hear more from my remarks, um, but this is about urgency and I have asked the School Construction Authority on behalf of my community to continue to bring school sites to me and to bring not only the shortest timeline possible, but to follow the law. This one in particular uh, on this site has some historic issues that we are going through, and so I'm really happy that we're having a, a robust conversation right now. But I'm asking that of, and I'm gonna say it over and over again, I need you to do that for every single site. We're in crisis, and we need you to bring it to us as quickly as possible by following the law and having a robust conversation. That is why we're here. Thank you, Council Member Mancheca. And so my next question is, it's a crisis, and this is a crisis that could not have waited two months or a month and a half, or whatever it is, to get to us in end of August, beginning of September? On behalf of my community that is asking me to do this, and I am with them, absolutely yes. Every day is important. Thank you. I <clears throat> Ms. Mendez, if I may uh, follow up on that a little bit too from the SEA's perspective, we've been engaged with the ownership of that property for well over a year now in an effort to acquire the piece of property for construction, and they are becoming somewhat weary with what we need to do, obviously statutorily and community-wise. And one of the reasons we had hoped to get this in sooner rather than later is we don't want to lose the property for the community as well. So understood. So let me rephrase the question. The um, private owner who owns the property, you've been in negotiations for over a year, and while the owner has agreed, any more delays can uh, alter or have the whole um, agreement fall under. Is that correct? That is correct. We've actually been in contract for, well, for over a year at this point in time. They could have probably decided to back out. We were able to persuade and encourage them to continue in contract with the SCA for the construction of the school and explaining thoroughly what our process was, being that it is a historic building. And they did stay in because of that, but they are obviously becoming weary as private owners, continuing to pay taxes and carrying charges and things of that nature while we go through our statutory process. Thank you. That's very important for me to hear. Um, also, I think, um, Councilmember Mancheca, you said that the building actually is in very poor condition as well, and that any delay may affect the actual uh, integrity of the building. Is that correct? That is what I've been told by the School Construction Authority, but I, it would be great for you to uh, confirm that these buildings really need immediate uh, attention. Um, in fact, that's absolutely correct. Um, in furtherance of that, we actually did um, engage the owner, current ownership to allow the SEA to come in early to do some cleaning and shoring to ensure that nobody's hurt while we go through this process and that there's no further deterioration of the structure so that we can do exactly what we intend to do, and that is reuse those reusable portions of the building. Thank you. These last few answers leave me in a very comfortable place to uh, voting for this public siting going forward. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Council Member. Thank you, Council Member Medez. Yeah. Uh, so the committee would like you to give us a copy you know, of, your, uh, sure. of your presentation. Yeah. So we would like to keep that. Oh, as a record, yeah. So you can keep that if you'd mm. like. Yeah. Give me a copy, yeah. Here. Yeah, maybe you can no, give them a copy and we can make... Yeah. In the future, we'll bring copies. Can, I'll, I'll ask a question off the record, just for my own knowledge. Yeah, 
Thank you very much. We are done with the questions. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we have a member from the public, uh, Maria Walker. Uh, you want to testify? Yeah, just identify yourself and start. Now turn on the mic, yeah. Good morning. Um, I am Maria Rock. I'm here representing myself as a long-time uh, resident of Sunset Park since 1964, as well as the founder of Friends of Sunset Park, a community organization that has first and foremost uh, prioritized the uh, construction of schools of quality, not just buildings, but of quality schools for our neighborhood, which have been, in short, uh, thrift for, I would say, 30 years. This is nothing new with Sunset Park, as well as the preservation of our uh, history in Sunset Park and um, our pride of place. So um, one of the proposals on the table clearly is the intersection of that, and that would be the former 18th. It was known as the former 18th precinct before the former 68th precinct. And most recently, everyone in the neighborhood uh, refers to it as the castle. So we have our own little castle, and we are certainly pr proud of it. But first and foremost, I want to get out of the way 100% um, support for um, repurposing the site on 18th, uh, on 18th, sorry, on 8th Avenue and 45th, 46th Street for. Uh, the former supermarket for, <clears throat> sorry, uh, for a school, for a 300 seat school. There's nothing about that building that um, is historic, has any, nothing that the neighborhood ever felt needed to be preserved. And it was sold already um, prior to it, be, it being identified by the SCA, though it had been identified by the parents in the community, by the people in the community who actually brings us to this pier today, because it, it was parents and community activists that put the, the need, the, well, it goes beyond the need, the, the scarcity and the emergency of the school overcrowding in Sunset Park for, on, on the front page. So that is, never mind 100%, 200% support for that. Um, and I'm sorry that more neighborhood people weren't here, but their families with children, and I don't think children are allowed in the city, city hall. We have to change that um, to let parents then be able to come here and um, participate in this process. Um, but let, I would like to speak about the former 18th, 68th, Castle, whatever you want to call it, on uh, 43rd. Um, two things, clearly the need for school and that site was identified way, way decades ago uh, as a to be brought back to the community to fulfill a community need. And initially the, the, the purpose was as a community center. For many reasons that there's no time right now to explain that the, co the community was betrayed, was denied that, and the site sat there because of behind the scenes, leger demand and deals and more deals that you could write a book about this whole thing. So here we are. but. And I think, yes, we want a school, but I think we need to invest a little more time or a lot more time in the details of this deal. Um, what has been proposed thus far um, to uh, demolish the in, in, internal part of the main building of the precinct um, and just preserve the facades on 43rd and 4th and then also demolish the stables, I think it's a very um, drastic and uh, crude approach to this. I think, and I don't, for no reason I, do I think that there is any, um, any, uh, any intent to uh, do anything wrong about it. I think this is low-hanging fruit. I think we as a city are better. We have much better um, uh, knowledge in this, in this city, and we have a lot more, um, uh, well, let me just say that we are home to some of the most respected 
faculties of historic preservation in the city. We are a college town. And uh, what I am here to implore, because I don't want to take more of my time and have time to say, is that there, the, whether LPC, SCA, SHPO need to sit together in conjunction with, and I'm sure they can and they will, you know, if we all put our heads together and be transparent and, and be collaborative in coming up with the most elegant outcome for this and any other uh, site in the city of New York that has historical value. We can do it. We are this world-class city. We certainly can do better than, and I know those, that, that box behind the corner, it's a very preliminary, and not that I never thought that for at any point anybody would truly want to build that, because they would be, they would be thrown out of the AIA for even suggesting such a thing. But um, we can do better. Early on, I suggested that maybe a competition a design competition in the city with the best minds at the table and have everyone do the best, not only for this building, but for Sunset Park, for the children who will have pride of place, for this community that has been so devastated over, over for, not, for being ignored, being neglected. And here is a place where we can bring back and give back, return some of that pride of place. And I know the SCA, has behaved very well. We're proud of what they've done, the hard work they have invested in giving us side after side and listening to us and realizing that, yes, there was space in this neighborhood sorry, to build schools. So I know, but everybody needs to sit at the table and needs to put their best foot forward and give us an elegant, elegant building, preserving those tables, and yes, maximizing the, the site for schools, but if 50 seats one way or the other, or something, we can do this. The site can manage, and um, we are front and center to collaborate. Let's open up our minds. Let's go forward with this and say, yes, we can do a much better job. Everybody needs to be at the table. SHPO, LPC, um, uh, the universities. I mean, my goodness, people send their children from all over the world and pay th hundreds of thousands of dollars to have their children graduate from our faculties of historic preservation and architecture. We need to have, we have the, those people here, we have those minds, we have that talent here, and we need to make use of that. Sunset Park deserves that and more. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your suggestion. Yeah. Any so, uh, are there any more members uh, who have questions? No. Thank you. Are there any more members of the public who wish to testify? Seeing none, uh, the public hearings on these items are being closed. Uh, Council, uh, we want to make a call. Vocal. Councilmember Mancheca, do you want to make a statement? Before yeah, I'm just going to make a, a hopefully a quick statement and also just applaud um, uh, Maria Roca for being here and representing uh, not only a voice of the community but her own kind of long-standing commitment to education uh, and really public space spaces in the city. Uh, there's no doubt that she alone, um, without bringing everyone else that she, she has in family and partnership with the community, really continues to pave forward a change in relationship with city agencies. And that is, that is something to not only commend, but to acknowledge, and, and we have to do that every day. And so I, I'm so happy that I get to do that right now in front of my colleagues uh, and on public, in public, to make that, to make that uh, acknowledgement and thank you for your service. Um, there's no doubt that the work that the agency, the School Construction Authority is making right now is really alleviating something that needs to happen in this community. We have to act and we have to act now. 
Um, Sunset Park is in dire need of ele elementary school seats. The elementary schools in District 15 are currently operating at over 120% capacity. Average class sizes in our elementary schools are between 25 and 30 students, with some classes breaching the 30 student mark. Overcrowded schools with large classes can have negative impacts on child development. This is something Maria Roca talks about all the time. And this, we will lose a generation of people and young people in our city, in our neighborhood, here in Sunset Park. So we must act quickly. Uh, to add capacity. Recent reports produced by local advocates make space for quality schools. Vosa Ciudadanas, Friends of Sunset Park, and public hearings held by District 15 have verified that overcrowding is an issue. The current five-year plan allocates, you heard it today, $300 million in funding to fund 3,000 seats in, C in District 15. However, it is extremely difficult to find sites in Sunset Park that are large enough and safe enough for schools that would display that would not displace residents or businesses and that are accessible to young students. In an ideal world, we would be able to build large new schools and large open development sites, but that is not the reality on the ground in Sunset Park. We have been forced to creatively pursue smaller sites and, and at every opportunity. Both of these schools that you heard today on, for the public hearing are smaller than ideal. Both together, they will significantly reduce the strain by adding over 650 desperately needed elementary school seats in the community. While I strongly support historic reservation, and I do, and the constant advocacy for landmarking uh, in our delayed historic district for Sunset Park, I also believe that it is an instance where we can achieve both the balance and urgent need for schools and worthy preservation. And I heard the School Construction Authority, I hope you heard those words from Maria Roca about how we bring more people together and think about how we push ourselves, even if right now we're going to be voting in support of your opportunity to take that site, bring it back. We need to hear that call from our community to make that the best. We know that you've worked with the state's Office of Parks and Recreation and Historic Preservation to arrive at this proposal to preserve the most significant historic, to mostly significant um, character of the buildings. The imposing facades of the former police station on 4th and 43rd will be incorporated into the new school building. The decision to demolish parts of a landmark building is not to be taken lightly, and alternatives must be considered carefully. As part of the environmental review, SCA looked closely at an alternative that would have more fully preserved the historic police station and stables. Unfortunately, that, that uh, was not able to be accommodated at this time. It would have resulted in only one third of the seats and would have no gymnasium or cafeteria. And we know in Sunset Park that is not how you build schools. The threat of continued private ownership further intentionally decays and decays the building and the likelihood of luxury residential development on the site means we must act now or face the risk of losing our building entirely. The SCA proposal for 4302 4th Avenue strikes the best combination of achievable, achievable and thoughtful preservation and permanent public benefit. I urge my colleagues to support this application. And again, I say this. We bring these two sites for you to take control of those sites, but always hear the cry of our community to do the best you can to make this site on the historic side and on 8th Avenue the best school it could possibly be. You heard it today. You're going to keep hearing it from me. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Now, Council, uh, please uh, call the roll. Councilmember Ku. Aye. Mendez. I vote aye, and I look forward to a school being built that incorporates uh, some of the existing walls of the landmark structure. Council Member Rose. I vote aye, and congratulations. It's really important that we provide school seats for our children, and um, I'm glad that you were able to get this through. Congratulations. Council Member Kalos. I vote aye uh, with the conditions that were agreed to that SCA will work with the community, preservation groups, and the LPC over the uh, state, as it were, to ensure that the maximum amount of preservation can be done. 
I want to congratulate Councilmember uh, Carlos Menchaca on his advocacy in preserving the facade, which otherwise would not have happened, and congratulate him on getting more school seats, and uh, also with the additional caveat that SCA actually deliver more school seats in other high-needs districts as well. Uh, thank you. By a vote of four in the affirmative, zero in the negative, with zero abstentions, the items are recommended for approval by the Full Land Use Committee. Thank you, members of the public, my colleagues, council, and then you staff. Uh, the meeting is adjourned.